everyone and welcome back to the red path it is dara and brian here with you today and we are going to be talking about our second favorite thing to talk about here on the channel which is the chaos space marines codex specifically the dread talons one of the uh so-called meme detachments of the book uh maybe it's a meme maybe it's not but brian is going to tell us all about his experience having run the dread talons a little bit now um bringing them to an rtt recently and uh, yeah, we're going to go through Brian's experiences, you know, how the list has been doing, what it pivots to now that Pariah is upon us and it's seen some significant changes and what he's going to be doing with the future. Brian, how are you doing today, my man? I'm doing good, Dara. I'm really excited to be back. I had a lot of fun playing this list. Uh, let me tell you, this is probably the most fun I've had playing 40k since start of 10th edition World Leaders. Like, it's that fun, honestly, being able to play this out of the box, wacky, almost like a circus, just Tons of cool things going on. Nobody knows what's happening. I don't even know what's happening. And every turn is basically a whole new world because I'm rolling the dice every turn, literally. Yeah, I imagine, uh, you know, pivoting from world leaders into this for, for a little bit of fun. It's quite a different experience. Just uh, so many different mechanics going on. So many things to have to think about that you don't normally have to consider. And yeah, it's it's a very interesting way of kind of expanding your your horizons um but how have the games been so far like what have you been running and then why don't you uh lead into the rtt and talk to us a little bit about how that experience was okay yeah i'll start by saying this rtt was run under leviathan uh, this was a leviathan rtt probably one of the last leviathan events that are going to be run in the country um we did eat a significant points nerf, uh, specifically on this list too. I think my list went up 130 points, which is just dropping one Havoc squad. On uh, Honestly, that I don't think it really impacts too much what the list is trying to accomplish, and maybe you'll lose a couple games because of it, but not, it's not really going to impact it super much. It's annoying. I don't like it, but it is what it is. We're paying the price for Renegade Raiders. Um, so my list is uh, I have a Chaos Lord, uh, with the enhancement will breaker uh, that is the enhancement it's the bad enhancement but points for the sake of points i just had points left over that's whenever you hit something it's forced to take a battle shock immediately afterwards i have a chaos lord with jump pack uh, with warp field thrusters i have harken world claimer i have a demon prince with wings who has eater of dread which is the cp enhancement farming cp and then i have a master of executions those are all my characters Next up, we have just a humble squad of cultists there to sticky the objective turn one. Two squads of five legionnaires. Uh, max melee loadouts. Each of them do have one Laz cannon, though. I have two Chaos Rhinos. One Vindicator. One squad of Laz cannon Havocs. One squad of ten Raptors uh, maxed out with multi or with Melta guns. So four Melta guns. Two squads of five Raptors with Melta guns. One squad of ten Warp Talons. And uh, one squad of five Noise Marines on the side. Noise Marines say whenever they shoot something, they get to Battle Shock or make your opponent take a Battle Shock check. So that's kind of why I threw them in there. Um, Firebrands are cool, but uh, Noise Marines are a catch all. They hit non infantry and they have a 48 inch range and they're assault. So you can get a little bit more utility out of that. Uh, also, they have the Battle Lane keyword, which helps out a lot too. Actually, no, I don't think they do. Uh, when you ally them, I don't think they come with them. Because they, have Lucius, they right? yeah. gain battle line when they get added, When if you're playing Emperor's Children. So, um, I mean, lost there. But once they're added to uh, once they're added to uh, Emperor's Children Codex, I think they actually get the battle line keyword back. So, we'll see. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a kooky list. There's a whole lot going on. A lot of moving there, parts. There's a whole lot going on. And initially, when I was playtesting it, like, it's a hard list to play. It's like... There's a lot of small things. It reminded me of when I was piloting Thousand Suns because there's a lot of, like, you got to set three guys up to pull off something. Like, your Demon Prince, whenever he flies over something, he battle shocks it or makes it take a battle shock check. If you need, if you have something you desperately need uh, to unlock, there's two strats you unlock by having something battle shocked, either bonus AP and melee or full rerolls to hit and wound and shooting, which when you have four Laz cannons with sustained full hits to wound... Uh, and and reroll real re good, real fast, right? <laughs> I shot at a rampager in this event and got seven hits with last cannons, and that was heaven. Oh, that felt good. I'd say it felt it good. Felt... <laughs> um, and being able to unlock that's nice, but um, battle shocking is not reliable, right? Uh, at even at minus two, uh, your opponent can still roll an eight. So why not make them try twice? Once you make them try twice, it's pretty good chance that they're going to be battle shocked, and then the noise marines can be there to make sure that it's almost guaranteed. Same thing with Raptors coming down. 
Um, so there's a lot of cool components going on in there, but uh, we can get into yeah. some of the games if you like. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, I think you touched on the main thing I wanted to kind of like ask you about was like the initial mental load of like learning the army where you kind of just like, oh, wow, <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> It, it's a lot and it's like it feels like a bunch of ants coming together to accomplish one big task yeah. um Which the list is, is not space marine army should feel like right? yeah and it's like the list is not incredibly lethal um nothing i have is going to just one shot anything off the table without thinking about it other than maybe the one chaos lord legionnaire brick running around but even that then that's consistent it can spike hard yes um and it, i'm not saying it's bad at all because the legionnaire plus lord is still disgusting um for like what 180 points you could probably go to ap4 and pick up most things in the game um but you still got to set a few things up now you got to get things battle shock to get your bonus ap um which i think this army actually benefits quite a bit from the free strat change because again i'm running two to three lords you can sub out harkin for the lord which it'll be neat to see in the future what yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of strats that. that you can you can pop off for free which is quite interesting because the strats are not terrible right Actually, I'd say Dread Talons probably has the best suite of strats. Like, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, bonus AP, full rerolls to hidden wound, fall back and charge, and probably this is one of the strongest. Uh, there's a three inch deep strike, and then one of the strongest strats in the book actually is the if you fall back, I can run you down and recharge you. Um, so game one was against Chaos Knights, which is funny because they're also the other battle shock uh, detachment or it's battle shock army mines, detachment. Right? <laughs> and uh, I think on turn two, like. Two thirds of the board was battle shocked on both sides. Like even my stuff was too, and we we're just both looking at each other like, "Wow, this is gonna be a very low scoring game." But it was a WTC scoring event, so uh, we were doing differentials, um, which for RTTs is, I don't know if I like that for RTTs, um, but it ended up being fine. Um, I like the guy that runs the event; it goes well every time. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, my opponent kind of like pulls all out in front of me. Uh, I typically start with the 10-man Raptor Brick with Harkin off the board to be able to ingress and just mortal wound bomb something. I started with one. I have a Havoc that I didn't mention in the list because this is what I gave you is the now Pariah list. There was another squad of Havocs. I would start off the board with four Reaper Chain Cannons. Um, really good combo when you have sustained plus four rerolls to hit and wound. That was mainly for Green Tide, which... I feel more comfortable removing it because Green Tide, I think, just took a significant hit. Um, I was playing with old Warp Talon still, though. Um, he kind of moved all out in the middle of the board, and when I went out, um, like I said, getting these chain reaction abilities of being able to set up battle shocks, like Demon Prince flew over a model, battle shocked it. Noise and Marines shot at the Rampager and battle shocked it. That allowed me to then get uh, full rerolls to hit and wound into the Rampager with four last cannons which knocked it all the way down to like three wounds, which then Chaos Lord went and finished it off. And then the rest of the guys actually ended up swinging, swinging into an armager, hurting that. Mo and five legionaries finished that armager off. And then into the other armager that was wounded, um, I managed to get bonus AP with some warp talents, picked that up and warp talents disappeared. So he's starting the game down three baby knights and a rampager, all from just doing like really cool. And, and it is really important to like, keep your options open too because like you want your noise marines to be set up to where they can shoot at multiple targets because you never know where you're going to need that battle shock check to go like you want the redundancy going in there um game ended up being very back and forth um with after that turn because now all of my stuff's out of its transports in the middle of the board but my scoring potential is just ridiculous with this list two five-man raptor squads and reserves plus the uppy downy calidus assassin he actually got very close to tabling me after this just because it was 10 war dogs plus a rampager. I mean, the war dogs are very efficient at dealing with two wound models or yeah, two wound models. Brigands are just ripping me apart, but I'm able to just deny him primary. Like I was battle shocking all of his knights every turn. I think because some of the knights were blowing up, putting wounds on other knights, which is forcing battle shock checks. Uh, that he was failing everywhere. I'm going up and down. I, it's just an absolute circus. And every time I'm battle shocking something, I'm usually screaming, "Yay! It matters. Battle shock matters. Look at me!" And it was just fun playing the meme list. And actually, it, it worked very well. I ended up 20 owing my opponent, um, just because he could not score points. Yeah, I mean, like, like if, he, he, if they're battle shocked all the time, it's just like, well, you got no primary. So yeah, it's just five knights running around. Um, he could still do actions, like, right? because this is, and he would have done even worse if this was Pariah. 
which excites me because they're even across the three games. Like game two, same thing. Battle the whole army's battle shocked. Still doing actions and stuff. That will not happen anymore. So I'm actually excited to run the list again. Um going forward. But that was it for game one. Um I he definitely saw an underestimate because he didn't I didn't have that much anti tank, but he underestimated what full hit and wound reroll meltas do. Like that ten man Raptor squad <laughs> can just delete delete yeah, a knight with its eyes closed. Like what four meltas in that squad or something? Oh yeah, I mean I'm wounding on fives and like I'm gonna pick lethal, but I'm gonna fish for the sixes and then I'm gonna come back and fish again, and it just takes like two. Like one goes through and I roll the six for damage and you're taking eight damage. Like that's saucy. So. Uh, that was game one. Uh, game two, we go into my second least favorite list in all of 40k. Uh, Iron Hands. Uh, with no. Iron Storm. No. <laughs> and it's Hammer Anvil. Uh, Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. <boss> log. <laughs> um, three turns, baby. <laughs> yep, and uh, I... <sighs> Knowing what happened to them in the update... And still having the Tech Marines operate as an aura was just probably another thing that fueled my rage during this game. Because uh, he had three Redemptors, two Gladiator Reapers, and a Repulsor Executioner. Uh, pretty much all within the bubbles of advance and shoot and critting on fives, lethals, right? It was crazy. Anything I showed him died instantly. The Warp Talons died turn one because they had no place to hide because he put Redemptor in middle and both on the side. So it was like impossible to hide from an advance and shooting redemptor and not be seen down a sight line. This is GW terrain layout one. There's nowhere to hide. Um, so I kind of just had to show him most of my army. I could hide from one of the flanks. So I had to show one whole flank my entire army. Because um, he got to cherry pick what he wanted to shoot at and then play from there, which it felt really bad because one redemptor picks up 10 warp talents pretty handedly, even through the invulns. Just the macro plasma, full rerolls, like it. It was nuts. Hitting on twos, crit fives, right? It. It didn't really. That army's dumb. Um, but then we get into a situation where I pick fixed. It's ritual. I have a lot of trash, so I'm cleansing two objectives every turn. Um, I'm also deploying every turn. I was dropping in his back line with a three-inch deep strike every turn, shutting down his scoring as well. Um. I did my best to hold the game together, but ultimately I could not crack all of that armor. Um, I have enough tricks to blow up some armor per turn, but not three Redemptors and Repulsor Executioner. Plus, if you shoot against Iron against um, Iron Storm, if you don't kill a vehicle, it can pay a CP and shoot you back at full ballistic skill, um, which is brutal, especially for an army like mine, which has a lot of chip damage. Like five last can or four last cannons into a Redemptor is not going to kill it; it will hurt it. But it'll get enough to for him to pay a CP and kill my Havocs back, which just feels awful to play against. Yeah, um, it's just like a needless free trade, right? Yeah, and it's it. The game ended up being close. Um, like I said, all of his stuff got injured. Um, his entire army was battle shocked almost the majority of the game. He ended up just tabling me just a little too quickly, and he recovered the primary in the last two turns. Nice. Oh, so I ended well, up losing that nice, game. I guess, but... No, I mean, it was a, it was a loss, but I yeah. feel like I definitely won that game if we were playing Pariah. Yeah, well, I guess Iron Storm just doesn't exist then, right? Uh, no, it probably still does. I'm going to be honest, like, after seeing the changes, and yeah, his auras were nice, and they were relevant a couple times, but I still probably got tabled even in the new. Even Mercy's weakness going up to 2 CP and points hikes. That's all they're spending their CP on. Mercy's weakness and guess, then the yeah. shoot back. Like they yeah. don't care because they're not CP rerolling because they get to reroll hit wound damage anyways. Um, I think I still probably lose that game, but I think it gets way closer. It's a tough one though for the Talons mm. because they you don't especially this list it doesn't really have the uh, high capacity anti armor. You know, um, like you said, it's relying a lot on chip damage and hit and run tactics almost and. That just isn't really going to work when you're facing a shoot gun army, you know, um, not not to that scale anyway. I do think that uh, that um, Iron Storm's probably going to fall off a little bit because I think into specifically me, Iron Storm does really good into mass marine bodies, but uh, specifically mass marine bodies that can't really punch up. Uh, 
but I think Ironstorm will fail wildly into a lot of the other shootier armies and, and to other armies like World Leaders that can really get across the board and blow things up real quick and put that pressure yeah. on them because we do have the ability to punch up into those vehicles. So I think we'll probably see that list drop off a bit, but um, sure, maybe in, a, maybe in this coming new coming meta, I can try Dread Talons and do it again. Nice. So uh, game three, last game of this little RTT, what were you playing into? Uh, game three of this last RTT, I was actually playing against one of the first time I've ever played against it was Obeisant Necrons. Oh, the uh, Ob Obesians Phal Phalanx or something? Yeah, Obesians yeah, Phalanx. Whatever it's called, Ob Obesians. Obesity and, Phalanx. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I've never heard of. This. I didn't know this attachment existed. So I like thought this was like, I, I just never heard of it before. And I was like, is this like Crusade stuff? What is this? And then uh, its rules started popping off, which is like, they basically get to Oath of the Moment stuff, and it gives them plus one to wound against that thing. And if you're on an objective, they get to re-roll the full wound roll against that thing. So like, um, as soon as he said that, I committed to never standing on an objective the entire game that he could see me on. And that's pretty much how the game went. I hid from him the whole game. And when I did pop out, I damaged his entire army, blew up a few things. Reaper chain cannons are real good into Necrons. Anything that has a oh, four-up yeah. save. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I didn't even think of so, that. <laughs> so he showed me 10 Immortals, and I was like, bye. Here's full nice. rerolls, hit wound, and it's just gone. Uh, Satan, I do real well into Satan. As soon as I popped out those Melted Guns, just lit them up. Full rerolls to hit and wound with Melted 2. Take care, take care of a Satan. Harkin does Mortal Wounds on Impact. That must have so, felt real nice, right? Having a good answer to a Satan after having played World Leaders for so long. It's euphoric, and it's like Vindicators popping off, shooting these Havoc Reaper cannons, and I'm like, oh my god, do I like shooting? And then, I don't know. I told myself, okay, this is the only event that I've run not World Leaders at in a year and a half, and I don't. I think it's time to put them away for another year. Maybe that was the joke, is it's like, this is my year <laughs> to come out and use guns. Now I have to punish myself and go back to no guns. Naturally, yeah, yeah. Um, but he had four captains. More importantly, he had four captains in his army. Um, so he could be doing free strats anywhere he wanted because the Obeisant actually has a lot of battle tactics in it. Um, he didn't get to captain once. Right. I didn't table him. This is just him having everything in his army be battle shocked. Spooky, spooky. Because um, he... Necrons are kind of lower leadership thresholds a lot of the time anyway. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, like, that detachment has a fight on death, which is really good. But when you're starting engaged with raptors that charged you, and I take a battle shock check, oh, I guess you're not fighting on death. Just nonstop everywhere. Uh, the one thing I learned from this event, for this list more than anything else, is that I can and will battle shock you everywhere. And yes, it'll be a little swingy occasionally, but if I want something battle shocked, I will get it battle shocked. Yeah, anything I mean, you're, else you're is just push like, as you said, if you want something shocked, you're gonna push three or four checks on them in a given moment, which is a lot. You know, there you can't roll that many, you know, seven ups on two dice four in a row times. It's just not gonna happen. You know, oh, think of it like making it, charge rolls. You're not gonna make like five seven inch charges in a turn. No, and you need eights, but against me for the record like it, i am making you minus two with the raptors like it is and yeah your opponent might sometimes blow you out with like an eight 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 but like what can you do that could be like playing against custodians and they roll 10 four ups like that just happens yeah. sure it's a yeah. dice game and like you yeah. can't blame your mechanic for not working at that point because that's just it was it was never gonna you it was never gonna work out for you to begin with right. so um yeah i'm just cutting that reaper chain cannon havoc squad going forward army was a blast to play it was refreshing to play something different um, everybody thought I was memeing at first. They were all like, ha look, the Night Lord's player. And then they started hearing the words, okay, that's Battleshock. Okay, that's Battleshock. Okay, Battleshock check here, Battleshock check here. And we were being pretty loud about it because my opponents all thought it was an absolute blast too. So every time they got Battleshock, they'd scream, Battleshock! And then like everybody else in the room just heard that get repeated over and over and over again. They're like, what the hell is going on over the terrors, there? That's the setting. <laughs> and I have like the little kill team tokens to like show what is battle shock. Like when something gets battle shocked, it's like a little night Lord screaming at you. Nice. So I like their little <laughs> bat face. So like they walk over to the board and there's like 20 tokens all over the board. And I was like, they're like, what's battle shock. And I was like, it's probably easy to tell you what isn't. Um, so oh, nice. yes, detachment's actually solid. Um, I, I think it's a, blast and i actually think it may be one of the stronger attachments in the book 
I think in the right hands, yeah, it's it's got some serious play. Would you consider, um, you know, taking this to a GT level event, or do you think he'll keep it to the RTTs for now? I have to get. I'm not gonna lie. The biggest downside of this list is I'm gonna be painting 40 jump pack marines, and then if you are a Night Lords fan, and I've been made fun of for this, and I probably have to commit now, painting those little lightning bolts going down the sides, those little blue lightning bolts. It's a lot. It's probably going to take me two years to paint this army, if I'm being honest. So how is it going? Like, how is the the hobby aspect of this going? Um, it was a nightmare to build that because like those jetpacks, the only way to get them to fit properly is you have to like push down from the top, it's which is where spiky. all the spikes from the yep. vents are. So like your <laughs> fingers are actually sore after building these models. Yeah. Um, I found the trick was to to flip it and press it down into a table or like a corkboard surface or something now it's obviously much too late to tell you that now but <laughs> yeah well i mean i'm not running max jetpacks yet we can go farther um further beyond uh but uh i'm gonna get get around to painting it it's gonna be more of a side passion and um i'll take it to if there's ever a gd that doesn't allow that that allows non-painting i'll take it to that rtt's absolutely i don't need as much practice with my world leaders anymore especially at my locals right i don't need to be really bullying too many people so i'm gonna be sticking to just uh my more fun armies um and i actually do think it's got a chance to be competitive uh but i will be taking it hopefully to gts in the future it will take me a while to get painted um currently i'm in a repainting process for my world leaders which i'm about halfway done with at this point so i'm really excited to get them hopefully going to wcw uh with a nice display board too um so uh, yeah, I would actually consider taking them to a GT, but personally, the hobbying is holding me back. That's entirely fair. Um, I suppose, yeah, for, for anyone interested, uh, I will actually be putting out relatively soon a tutorial for how to paint Night Lords, um, mainly for Brian's benefit, but also for anyone interested in dipping into Night Lords. And, uh, you know, I was looking around on the internet and there actually just isn't any good tutorials for Grimdark Night Lords, which is wild. Um you would think that would be one of the go-tos. So yeah, maybe in four weeks or so, you guys might be seeing a nice little tutorial on that amongst other things. But uh, I just think it's really cool. You know, it's nice that we have this little side corner that we can just like dive into every now and then. Like you've got the Dread Talons, I've got the Cultist Hell. Um, and it's, it's kind of fun to just update people because I was surprised when we put out the first couple of videos, the little cult following that we had going on where people were actually just like, tell us more about this, like we want to hear about your adventures. So yeah. this is the first update, right? Yeah, one of our, actually that Dread Talons video we did a couple of weeks ago is actually quite successful. So yeah. That, yeah. That, that kind of like positive feedback from you guys really is like helping fuel my excitement. It motivates uh, us, right? Yeah, like people are hyped to see it, so we're hyped to do it and it goes on kind of like that. So you know, obviously, if you if you do want to see more of this uh, little mini series that we've got going on, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Hop into the Discord. Um, we have your own. We've kind of like hijacked our list channels in the Discord now. Like your one is the Night Lords channel, and my one is the Chaos Cultist channel, and I'm kind of here for that. Um, but yeah, if you wanna you wanna come in and hang out and uh, pick our brains on what weird chaos stuff that we're doing, that's the place to be. Um, but yeah, any other final thoughts before we close this one out, Brian? Yeah, just the kill team's coming out soon, hopefully in the next couple months. And between that and like hopefully if we get like a really good grim dark tutorial here, like you don't have to play Dread Talents, guys. Like Raiders are still broken. Veterans are still really good. And like if you just want to have fun and play like this cool thematic different army and like be different, like you don't have to play Dread Talents. It's fun as hell. Uh I would just like encourage everybody like try to like this book's fun. Play around with it. And Getting to play a Legion that doesn't really get shown off as much is also even cooler. So, yeah, it's hell yeah, sandbox, Night Lords, you know. Um, yep. It's a real, real deep sandbox, that book. And don't let any, anyone on the internet tell you that something is so bad that you shouldn't be playing it because it simply is not true. Um, but for now, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll probably close this one out. If you do want to show us any support and all that good stuff, subscribing and commenting and liking the video helps a ton it helps us know that we are making content that you guys enjoy and if you want to give us any further support the link to our patreon is in the video description where you can gain access to either the hobby or competitive focused discord channels where you will get uh, unparalleled wisdom from myself and brian amongst many other great memes but for now 
this has been our first little update in, I think we're going to call it the Chaos Corner, a, a little mini-series like that. Um, so we'll call this the first update for the Chaos Corner. I have been Dara, this has been Brian, bringing the Dread Talons, having a good time. Until the next one, folks, stay healthy, stay safe. And uh, we have a Night Lords version of this? Uh, I... Not sure. I was shock? Skin play skin shock. Play shock. <laughs> yeah. Stay battle later, shock, folks. guys. <laughs> battle shock.